Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, Coach Phil. Uh, today, we're uh, having a conversation with Coach Phil. Coach Phil and I played together um, in college. Now we work together, and I'm fortunate to have Coach Phil on the team that's handing, handling the technical and tactical side of the game, but also uh, Coach Phil is very well versed in the mental side of the game, as well as nutrition and, and many other things. So I'm excited to get into it here with you, Coach Phil. Uh, so first of all, how are, how's everything going? How's Germany? Good evening. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. Um, it's a pleasure to be on today. Uh, Germany is doing good. A nice, nice summer, summer day today. Off season for me. So uh, yeah, pre doing pretty good. Excellent. And um, you just finished your, your season, is that correct? Yeah, correct. Like, uh, Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks now since the last match. Uh, so still in the, still in the, uh, yeah, really enjoying the off time right now before getting back to, getting back to the fields, getting back to preseason, uh, getting back to running. So uh, yeah, enjoying the, enjoying the moment. Excellent. But already, already looking forward to, to being back on the field. Excellent. What would you, what, what league is this and what team is this? Uh, depends on, uh, depends on where you are in Germany. Uh, I think in most, most areas, it would be league, league five or six in that area. Got it. And what team is it? Oh, it was called Hoffer SV. <laughs> Sports club. Uh, yeah, it's close to uh, close to Paderborn, the Paderborn area, uh, close to Dortmund, the Dortmund area. So probably for all the all listeners from uh, outside of outside of Germany, probably Dortmund would be the the closest city and the biggest club to know. Excellent. Okay. Well, I, I wanted to ask you a couple questions today about um, what your take is as a as a European player, as a German player, growing up in the Bundesliga academies, playing for clubs like Dortmund. Um, I know you played here in college. What what's your perspective on the difference between American soccer and and soccer or football in in Europe? Oh. <sighs> Yeah, let me see. Um, there, there are a few. There are a few. I mean, everybody knows, or most players that have played in both in both uh, both styles, both countries, uh, would say probably yeah. The US is a little bit more physical. European soccer is a little bit more technical, tactical. Um, but I say, yeah, that's. But I think that's mostly down to uh, down to cultural cultural ideas because in in Germany in Europe soccer football is the number one sport and yeah you're just seeing and playing and having contact to it 24 7 so uh you for me for example I grew up uh yeah in a small village with my dad as a coach and two older brothers and I started playing for my older brother's team three years older when I was four when I was four and I only played soccer. Like, of course, you have a few different other sports in, in school when you have physical education in school or whatever, but it was only soccer all the time. And even when we don't train with a team, then you meet up with, yeah, with some friends and you you have free free play. And yeah, it's, it's soccer all around. While in the States, yeah, when you go to high school, you, yeah, you have so many different sports going on. And so... That's probably one a big a big uh, difference that you have in Europe. You have really, or in Germany, you have soccer as a as number one sport. Uh, at, while in the US, you are kind of, if I'm correct, like for from your perspective, uh, yeah, you have some some basket base, baseball, basketball, some American football, and then there are so many different sports. And in Germany, it's or in England as well, Spain, all the, the big European soccer countries, yeah, it's soccer 24-7. Yeah, that's, there's a couple things there. Number one is like pickup soccer. 
And in, it's, it sounds like in Europe, that's something that's quite common. Do you see yeah. in the streets and players playing? And that's just a regular thing for neighborhood kids to meet up and play. Is that right? And, yeah. And it's actually, that's, that's even probably the, the, uh, the, the manager of the German national team, he actually mentioned that a while ago, that we have to get back to that more because we are missing this instinct instinct football players like players like this typical number 10 players that see opportunities that can work in tight spaces that we need to do to get more more of that more of these players back into the game that we are missing that a little bit in germany at the moment that other european nations like france for example are producing more of these quality players and uh, yeah so pick up soccer uh yeah it was just it was everywhere like I had the pleasure of uh, growing up in a in a small town with uh, like a soccer field on the other side of our of our farm actually, uh, so I could just yeah walk over the street and was on a nice grass soccer pitch uh, and meet with my five six best buddies uh, that all lived like in a yeah in a five minute distance, so we could meet up whenever we wanted and that and we yeah met an hour before training started played uh yeah one against one all the time or three against three uh stayed after training uh met on three days played the whole summer vacation without any coaching just uh yeah trying out new skills playing and i think that's in the end yeah so this pickup soccer this free play this yeah unstructured environment that's in the end what creates yeah very important abilities like this there are, yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Like uh, in college soccer or in pro soccer, everybody is fit. Everybody can run. Uh, depending on the level, there is always all teams can defend. All teams have a certain tactic. Uh, but it's the players that can solve one v one situations. It's the players that can work. Yeah, that can that stay calm in tight spaces under pressure that decide games in the end. And yeah, for that. Pick up soccer is a big thing as well to develop these abilities. I know you played for you played for Paderborn U team. You played for Dortmund's U team. You played for German youth national team. Tell me, tell me a little bit about the training experience at the higher levels as a youth player. What was that like? How, how did you like it? Um, what was your favorite parts of it? Tell me about that a little bit. Oh, um, yeah, let me, let me see. Um, yeah. So like you said, I started, uh, or yeah, played for Dortmund youth team, uh, in the under 16 and under 17 age, yeah, age group, then for Paderborn under 19, under 23 and for Arminia Bielefeld. Uh, they are, they are also a Bundes Bundesliga club, uh, for the under 23. And yeah, it's, of course, it's, a it's a yeah whole different whole different world when you switch from a from a yeah I was scouted from a from a local city team here um, to Dortmund in the youth and yeah it's just if you are the best you are the best you are maybe the best player on the uh, on the local team you're scoring a lot but you are not really put to the test in in training because you are yeah maybe you are just more physical you are faster you sink quicker you have you're more precise in your passing. You are just on top. And then you go to Dortmund and they have, yeah, the on your squad for the under 16 that, that are just the 20 best players or the 24 best players in an area of like, yeah, two or three hour drives. So it's the, even the level in training is so high that you can, yeah, pro, that it's probably harder than the match on Sundays. And that's actually what their, yeah, what's their, if you ask a Bayern Munich player why they win the championship every year, uh, or at least for the last 10 years, uh, for me as a Dortmund fan, that's a bitter topic. But uh, if you ask them, their secret recipe is that the quality in training is so high and so intense and they're there that they treat practice as a, as a championship match, that the level is higher than playing Bundesliga on Sundays and that that gives them the ability to play yeah with such 
constant uh yeah success every year yeah it seems as though that's uh that's the common recipe but not a lot of clubs know how to how to how to how to do that right um i think we get i think it's 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 difficult to actually realize that and actually put that into place and actually have that type of culture right yeah um it's it's not easy um uh, so many clubs they are like yeah they are signing they are signing the best players they they can but the job for the for the coach is not only bringing in the best players they can but also uh yeah installing this mindset of this hunger this desire and to really keep that up even after a successful year like for example Dortmund won the uh won the championship two times in a row and they won the German cup and then the best players like uh, Lewandowski or Götze left and Hummels left to Bayern Munich so Bayern bought their three best players and that's it uh, and then the hard part for the for the club for the coaches for the scouts is finding their an adequate replacement with the same not only the same soccer ability but also with the same mentality with the same professional lifestyle with the same desire with the same understanding of the game that fits into the team's style of playing for example for yeah with back then Jurgen Klopp was coach at Dortmund and he has a certain style of play. You need to be very fit to play that style. You need to be able to press. You need to be able to run. And for example, yeah, you can play. Uh, you, they, you lose Götze and it would make no sense to replace that player with, uh, yeah, a player type like, for example, Andrea Pirlo. Of course, probably same quality as a soccer player, but not able to play the system. And therefore for clubs it's not only about bringing in good players it's about creating a philosophy and sticking to that and replacing players that fit into that philosophy which some clubs do well uh some don't do so well excellent very good and so i know you've gr grew up playing with you know you played with youth national team you played with some players that won on, went on and won World Cups, like Mario Goetze. Um, what was it like playing with the German youth national team? Yeah, uh, like yeah, like I already said, with with Dortmund, it was the maybe the best players of a two hundred kilometer uh, distance. And then you come into the and when you manage to start with that team, you think, yeah, I'm I'm doing good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm 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 doing pretty good. And then you. Yeah, you play there. Uh, yeah, you get scouted for the national team. You get there, and it's already again the next step. Like you, then you realize, yeah, level at club training is high, but now it's the best two players of every club. Like then they're the two best players of Berlin, the two best players of Frankfurt, of Gladbach, of Bayern, of Stuttgart, whatever. Then suddenly. Uh, yeah, so the, the the air gets thinner even even after Dortmund, you get there and uh, yeah, you still have to step it up and yeah, at that level you really you really see you you really learn your uh, or you see your flaws, you you see your weaknesses, and then it's about yeah, can I handle that? Can I can I handle uh, yeah, meeting meeting my flaws every day and how do I react to that? Can I can I still work? Uh, or do I have the the mindset, the desire to still improve, even though you're thinking, yeah, on the club level I'm doing good, but on that level you really you really see in which which areas you still have to work. That's excellent. You know, here in here in America, I think that well, first of all, I think that a lot of I would say like soccer parents, I would say a lot of them many of them have either not played the game themselves or played very little of the game or they have not played at a high level, which, you know, it's not their fault. It's just, they grew up in a world, in a, in a world where, you know, basketball, baseball, and American football were the main sports, right? So um, they're still getting used to the game just as much as their player, their ch children are learning the game. And um, one of the things that's been big for me in my career playing and coaching is the mindset piece, uh, as you know. 
Um, so I'm curious to know, like, in Europe, how much do they stress the mindset? Uh, how much how much do they talk about it? Do, do they talk about it? Um, what where, where does the mind like, you know, the psychological profile of a player, where does that fit in youth development uh, from from your experience? yeah um the mind yeah mindset is mindset is everything as if you want to make it because of course it's talent plays a role uh but the way from being a talented 10 year old to being a professional at 19 20 21 that's such a long way and to to, to uh yeah to stay in there for 10 15 16 years until you make it really make it pro so like i said i started with four uh to really stay in there uh stay away from any yeah any distractions working hard every day uh motivating yourself for every practice session uh adapting your lifestyle to to promote uh yeah recovery to be able to play twice a week and really be able to focus on or always being able to focus on the next match because like everybody can play a good match every four, every four weeks right like every soccer player with a little bit of talent is able to to score a free kick every six weeks and then walk around and yeah i'm the greatest but which if you really want to make it pro and if you really want to stay on top in this uh, yeah european top academies you have to be able to yeah, to see soccer as a job, you have to be able to sacrifice certain other things to, uh, yeah, to maximize your performance, your recovery. You really have to be able to, yeah, to focus on playing, on being able to play and perform at your best uh, consistently. And therefore, that's in the end what all coaches are preaching. That, yeah, to be honest, it, it sounds it sounds hard, but if you are not willing to to do that, there are 20 other players that would love to have your spot on the team, right? And therefore, uh, that's probably in this in this big academies, uh, the awareness that the mindset of taking soccer seriously and taking care of your body, living the professional lifestyle, I think that's in the end uh, what players in Europe learn, yeah, learn from an early age. Uh, if you if you go and visit an a European academy, and you watch these under eleven, under ten, under twelve teams, yeah, that they are already big on nutrition, they are already big on yeah, professional lifestyle, sleep, uh, how to how to uh, behave, how to represent the team, the club, uh, all these things, and in the end, that's all that's all com- what we what we combine as mindset, right? Um, so big part, big part, definitely. Excellent. Okay. Um, when it comes to, let's say turning 18, 19, 20 years old as a, as a European player, um, it sounds, I've, I've been having this argument with a, a couple, well, not an argument, but I've been, I've been talking about this with, with parents. I've been talking about this with coaches and I wanted to hear, uh, what your take is on this, but it seems as though when developing players and they're turning 17, 18, 19, 20 years old here in America, the, you know, the go-to is to go to college, right? It's go to the NCAAs, go to play college soccer. Whereas in Europe, you still have the development underneath the academy and you're still pushing to play professionally. Um from my perspective, it seems as though here in America, we, when it comes to players playing at the college level, all of a sudden that whole desire to develop from a, from an organization standpoint kind of slips away. And it's about the team winning that particular season so that, you know, the school looks good. The coaches, staffs, the coaching staff can keep their jobs whatever the case may be. Whereas in Europe, in these critical age, critical ages, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, 
they're still developing properly under underneath an organization that cares about them playing professionally. Is that a, is that assessment accurate? And what is your take on that comparison? Yeah, um, it's very, very different. Um, problem is in the States, the, or let's, let's start with Europe. In Europe, you have like, or for Germany, for example, you have like 10, 10 leagues from Bundesliga to League 10 or something like that. And if you come out of an under-19 team from Bundesliga Academy, probably but you maybe you are one or two or three of the lucky players that get a pro contract right away. Um, maybe you are, or maybe you are getting an, an offer for, for the under-23 team that are, they are mostly playing in league three, four, five. So like that, but that's already, to be honest, like leagues, league four is already very professional level. So these players don't work or any, uh, anything besides soccer. So uh, they are already on a professional level uh, and can focus on development completely, but they have, they are not in the Bundesliga right now. And the level is to be on, to compare it, even like league five players can walk into any NCAA team like right away. And the problem in, in the US is if you are in an NCAA team uh, and you play there for four years, that means you're playing league five in Europe for four years uh, at an age 18, 19, 20, where all the European players try to play there one year, perform and get up to the next league, make a step to league three and get better competition to develop and better, uh, yeah, better training, harder competition uh, where you kind of get stuck in the NCAA. And this, at, the, at the same time, the next problem is that you only have a real season in the NCAA from August to December. Right. While in Europe, you play year round and you play league plus cup, cup games plus another cup. So in Europe, if you play, are 18, 19 and you play league plus cup, you have, let's say, 50 matches, 40 to 50 matches in the in a season. While in college soccer, you have with preseason and national finals, if you reach them, you have what, 25? Something like that. So that's that's probably uh, yeah. Pretty, so I'm pretty aligned with you there. That playing college soccer is a good thing if you want to keep playing and get a degree. It's definitely not perfect for player development to uh, to reach the professional level. I mean, of course, the college uh, college soccer you have great facilities. You have great athletic strength training and stuff like that, but from a soccer from a soccer perspective, a soccer development perspective, I think yeah that's uh, yeah that's not the same not the same level as if you would be playing in a European League three or four. Mm. Like it's not the same as you would be playing Dortmund second team or Bayern Munich second team, which are playing in German third division. And the good thing, if you are playing in the third division teams, is you are getting exposure and you are learning from 35-year-old pros because you are playing in third division, you are playing against pro teams all the time. Like every match, every Sunday is against a pro team, although you are playing for an under-23 team uh, that's still a pro, pro league. And you are learning from all the players. While in college soccer, you're mostly competing. Yeah, it's still like it's... Yeah, it's almost like a youth league, right? Like the, the age group is from 18 to 23, 24 mostly. Then you, yeah, maybe you have, some teams have some older players, but it's still not real senior pro soccer, right? And that's, so there are a couple of disadvantages for single player development if you compare European soccer to uh, college soccer. Makes sense. So from your opinion, because you've been coaching with me for a while now, you've played here in the States, you've grew up in Germany. What do you think uh, American players need to do to improve as a culture? Like what, what, what do you see culturally that needs to change or needs to improve to, 
to continue on this path that America's on to, to improving and getting better? I think it's, yeah, the American players, they just need, or they need more exposure to soccer. Like in Europe, we go to train, we go to our own training session, we get home and we watch the Champions League final or we watch the Bundesliga matches. And we are just, yeah, we just having more, more contact with the sports uh or like i said and if we had if we don't have training ourselves we can yeah you meet up with friends and play more so just more yeah more time on the ball uh more free play more exposure to high quality soccer to to learn from um so that's probably yeah the really the contact to and learning from the the best possible best possible options uh so that's that's probably a big step, big step there. Good and of course, coaching, tactics, uh, game speed. So like I said in the beginning, uh, or like many, many American players show, like if you, when they brought over Pulisic to the Bundesliga, of course he's fast, but it took like a year till he, uh, yeah, till he was tactically ready to play. It's pretty similar with Alfonso Davis at Bayern Munich. Probably the, I think he's the second fastest player in the league. Uh, but in the first ten matches, I was like, where is he running around? Like, what's what's what position is he playing? Is he left back? Is he left winger? Is he center striker? I don't know. And that's that's probably tactics, positioning, soccer IQ, understanding the game, and that's in the end you you learn all that by watching high quality by training on high quality teams like uh, yeah like if you come out of there or if you are what many european teams do is when they uh, whenever they have the chance they let the best under 19 players train with the pro team like once a week or some train some teams even have like this have special coaches uh, signed for uh, yeah they call it development coaches which their only job is to make sure that the biggest talents they have in the club are, uh, yeah, are getting some special treatment or some, yeah, some more guidance to to make that step and maybe be able to play Bundesliga right away after under nineteen, so they don't have to spend another year in the under twenty three, uh, and they do that by yeah, like signing extra coaches that work with these very special players and in the under 19 age like additional training sessions but also yeah nutrition lessons so pretty pretty much what we are doing in our msm performance academy uh with the peak performance training like giving these players some more some more guidance in some important areas that many clubs don't don't cover like what to eat after matches, uh, how to prepare for the weekend. Um, we're analyzing the weaknesses these players maybe still have by doing film assessment, all these stuff. Uh, that's what's happening at the, at the top level. Uh, and that's kind of in addition to, to the team training, uh, yeah, this single player development, individual player development. Uh, that's what they sometimes or even sign these extra coaches for, right? Because as a coach of a team, of a big team, uh, you have 24 players to take care of. You still, yeah, even in Europe, you still have to, uh, you have to win the matches, right? You still get some pressure from the bosses if you, uh, if you are Borussia Dortmund and you are losing the derby against Schalke in the, in the U19 Bundesliga or stuff like that, then you're still getting pressure, but still, the main focus should still be on player development and therefore they have these extra coaches they have nutritionists they have cooks for the team they have psychologists so uh yeah there's still still a lot to uh still a lot to improve in some academies but i think the uh overall it's going into a good good direction for single player development but uh yeah we are not there yet Excellent. 
Coach Phil, thank you, sir, for uh, sharing your insight and sharing your expertise with me. And um, hopefully the listeners have found that valuable for anyone that's listening, wherever you might see this, whether you're getting it in an email or seeing it on YouTube, you know, reply, leave in the comments, let us know if you have any questions or uh, let us know what you like, what you didn't like, what you agreed with. Uh, Coach Phil, thank you so much. And we'll talk, we'll talk again soon. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be on. Take care. Take care.